So we're going to try this thing that's been going on tag called Draw My Life by the fag. Well, my life began in 1986 where everybody had big hairspray hair. Everybody rode skateboards and I think they read books. Because, you know, they didn't really have anything else to do. The iPad wasn't invented or iPhone or cell phones for that matter. It was sad. And then the glorious day came. A savior for us all. Yep. That's little me. There I am. I was born to two happy parents. My mom and my dad. They were really happy to have me. They waited five years. <laughs> and then they brought me home. The first night was quiet. And then I began projectile vomiting all over everyone and everything. I guess we'll need to um, have that wall painted. Sorry, Dad. So, well, that's a bad. We'll try that again. Nope. So I got surgery on my wee little belly for pyloric stenosis, and I was happy. Yay, there's my scar. Still have it today. My mom and dad decided that I needed to have a little brother, so whenever I was two, they had him. And I wanted to play with him so bad, so I took my new Tonka truck, and I decided, hey, let's throw it in his crib. And, of course, it landed on his head. My mom freaked out. She was like, no, don't do that. But I, I just wanted to play, Mom. You know, I didn't understand he was little. And, of course, me and my brother found out as we were growing up that we had a ginormous family. And by ginormous, I mean, like, humongous. 25 cousins, 22-something or other great cousins, 18 aunts and uncles. It was ridiculous. It was like my big fat Greek wedding every holiday. But the holidays rocked. Oh, yeah. Eggnog contests, presents. It was a blast. When I was younger, I realized I was a little different than all the other kids. Like, whenever my brother was watching Power Rangers, he would talk about how the pink one was so hot. All I could talk about is how the red one was so hot, and I always noticed his package and his outfit and his abs. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna pass out if we keep watching this. We need to change it. So I found X-Men, and holy cow, cartoon characters can be sexy. Wolverine, Arr, yeah. Hmm, what does it all mean? So, fast forward a few years and I got into gymnastics, dance, uh, dan yeah, there you go, dance. No, that's not a tutu, y'all, that's me spinning. And soccer, really enjoyed soccer. Quite the dichotomy, soccer and dance, don't you think? But... I won a few trophies in dance and soccer. Our teams did well, and I did great, but my poor mother was run ragged, and she's now, I'm now the reason she has gray hair. Sorry, Mom. But I was happy. I enjoyed it. <laughs> in middle school, I got made fun of a lot because I was in dance. I cried a little bit, just saying, and my dad told me to just punch everybody who called me names, and I said, Dad, that would be a lot of people. So I decided I would change up some things. I decided I'd get some friends, and I found four awesome friends. There was Harry, and Faith, and Friend, and Emily, or M as we called her. Um, one of our teachers called us the Unholy Trinity. We were horrible to everybody and everything. It was a blast. I had so much fun. Oh, side note, my sixth grade science teacher was totally awesome. She had a tattoo of a daddy bear, you know, the Grateful Dead bear on her leg. So needless to say, I paid a lot of attention in science because she was freaking cool. It was awesome. Anyway, next. <laughs> Time flew by, so you see I'm drawing little 
clocks there. Yeah, that's that's fun. Time flew by. So, what's next? High school! Oh, ouch. And I spelled it wrong. Because you know why? I was in Hooked on Phonics as a kid, so I can't spell for a damn. It's bad. But whenever we went to high school, all my friends were still together, and it was us against the world. Yep, we had so much fun. All of our teachers loved us, all of our friends loved us. It was just a blast. But inevitably, I ended up being the only one that was by myself. Everybody off, everybody else paired off. They got girlfriends, they got boyfriends, and you know how kids are. They just dump you whenever they have somebody else in their life. It's like... Hey, look at me, I'm over here, forever alone, all by myself, blah, blah, blah. So, I decide, do I go with Jesus, or do I go with Dick, which is what I want. Oh, Jesus, yeah, that's what the family wants, so that's what I gotta do. Didn't want to make my mom crazy, wanted to make her happy, so I found a girlfriend. She was great. She was very sweet, very kind and funny. Uh, we enjoyed being around each other. We went to all kinds of dates. We went on, geez, I don't know. We went to the park. We went to, you know, the lunchroom. Oh, took her to the movies once I got my driver's license, which was awesome. I wrecked my dad's truck one time trying to get to her house. It was pretty cool. And, um, you know, we went parking like every day country teenager does, you know, you gotta sow some oats, sow some wild oats or whatever. It, it was fun. And of course we had, you know, I was a trooper. I didn't want to be in a relationship, but I knew if I didn't, I'd get made fun of. So I deserve an Oscar. Because, you know, what gay man can act straight for six years? Now all the guys at school were like, yeah, go bro. Yeah, man, you got it. Get it. You know, all the crazy things that you crazy straight men say. And whenever I was in high school, I actually discovered that I could sing. And I started leading worship at my church. Putting more chains around myself, trying to get away from who I truly was. I didn't drink or do any of the partying. I didn't smoke, because you know, you can't be a smoker and a stinger. And I didn't do drugs. I really didn't do anything of, you know, any consequence. Well, except for the, you know, constant sex, but who doesn't do that when you're a teenager? I mean, really. Have you ever seen American Pie? That's all it takes. Friction. So we get to college. College was a blast. I went to a little Christian community college. It was wonderful. I studied music and met tons of friends who totally enjoyed me for me. And we all used to sing together. And sometimes late at night when we were all bored of studying, we would, there was this hallway that went down like elevated and we would push each other down it <laughs> in the computer chairs and try to hope not to die it was so much fun and um the summer of my freshman year we got to go to ireland yeah that's where like i want to live like forever it was amazing we got to go to bush mills which makes bush mills irish whiskey a tasted whiskey went to giant's causeway it was just a blast it was so much fun. And then I got the bright idea, hey, let's get married. Until one night while I was married, um, I had a dream. And in that dream, I saw a little girl that I knew was my daughter. And she caught me making out with a dude on the couch. And she was like, Daddy, who's that? So then I needed to have a talk with my wife. 
Needless to say, that talk didn't go very well. Note to self, if you're ever talking to your wife and you want her to be your ex, don't take her somewhere where she can throw food in your face or anything like that. So, of course, once we divorced, I did what every other guy would do. I went on the internet and tried to find a date. I saw an ad that said, want a man? And I was like, well, yes, duh, click. And lucky me, I found the most perfect guy in the world. We've been together for six years. He's amazing, he's gorgeous, he's handsome, he's funny, and he's just the love of my life. It's, I couldn't live without him. He taught me quite a few things. I used to have a horrible fashion sense, and so uh, when we first got together, I would take up my shirts and be like, okay, which one? And he'd be like, that one, babe. You do not want to wear the other one. You would look horrible. And so I... I just love him. He taught me how to be me, and he taught me how to love people. For real, not just faking. Oh, and on my 21st birthday, he got me a weep. When it first came out, score! And then that summer, we went to Vegas. Our first vacation was Vegas, y'all. I mean, for real. Who goes to Vegas? Well, us. But it was a blast. We went to the Stratosphere. We got to see the little Eiffel Tower. We went to a Cirque du Soleil show, you know, the thing where the people hang down on the strings and roll around and dance and sing, and, and oh, the Bellagio had the most beautiful waterworks show. It was just amazing. It was heaven. It was fantastic. So when I came back home, I got my job at a portrait studio, Stay Cheese, so I could make some money, because, you know, you got to buy gifts back, and that's where I met the hag our wonderful friend the hag and we became best friends immediately I was like where have you been all my life for real like where I've been looking for you I missed you <laughs> and now I wait some tables and the hag and I had a crazy idea because we have a day off together we're like hey have, have you ever seen YouTube? There's all these crazy people on there. They're hysterical. And we are just as funny. Why aren't we doing this? I mean, there's Jenna Marbles, Daily Grace. There's Dan is Not on Fire. There's Smosh. There's Miranda Sings. There's Tyler Oakley. There's everything. But I noticed something. There is a huge, like absence of gay people on YouTube. Where are the gays? So, the answer, the fag and the hag. We decided to make videos for you guys for your viewing pleasure. You're watching one right now, and you know, the rest is history. We hope you keep watching, and we love you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your support. And remember, don't forget to subscribe, and you can clip up, click up on the top right right now and watch our next video. Bye!